Welcome to the video about adding and subtracting rational expressions, or in other words, fractions. To begin, I just wanted to give you a reminder on how to simplify fractions. So let's say we have a plus b over a. Remember that order of operations says that division must happen first. But I want to remind you that this division bar actually creates two groups. The group of a plus b and the group of a. So you really are supposed to look at them as sets of parentheses that happen first. Well, a plus b, you can't really add those together. They're not like terms, so let's say that that's done. Once we have that sum, we're going to divide that by a. That can also be written as a divided by a plus b divided by a. Now, a over a is simply 1. So we can simplify that expression to 1 plus b over a. In this other example, where a is being divided by a plus b, again, we have these two groups. But a must be divided by both a and b. So we can't split this up. So this is as simplified as it's going to get. The other reminder I have for you is how to add and subtract fractions. So here's a simple addition problem. If you have fractions with different denominators, you're going to have to make a common denominator. So notice that in the first denominator, we have b, and in the second den denominator, we have d. So the factor in the first is b, and the factor in the second is d. So we're going to create a new denominator of those factors being multiplied. I'm going to call that the LCD, the lowest common denominator. To do that, I would multiply the first fraction by D over D, and the second fraction by B over B. Remember, I'm really just multiplying each fraction by 1, so I'm not changing their values. I'm just changing the way that they appear. So then that would become AD over BD plus BC over BD. So we made common denominators. Once you have the common denominator, you can simply add your numerators. So we have A plus B, sorry, AD plus BC over BD. And now it is simplified. So let's get into some new examples. So in our next example, our first denominator has 3x, 2, and 2x. Our second denominator also has three factors, x, y, and xy. So we want to make the lowest common denominator. So notice that they both already had x as a factor. This one has 2 as a factor. This one's going to need that 2 as a factor. And this has the y. This one's going to need the y. So I am going to multiply the first fraction by y over y, and the second fraction by 2 over 2. And that will create 3y over 2xy and 2 over 2xy. Now I have a common denominator. I can add my numerators, so 3y plus 2 over my common denominator of 2xy. If you chose to make your common denominator the lowest common denominator, there won't be any real need to simplify. You've done your simplifying already. I want you to notice that we know a few things about x and y. Obviously, they're variables. They can stand for multiple uh, representation or rep multiple numbers. But we know that x can't be 0, and we know that y can't be 0, or else this would be undefined. In our adding process, we never lost that idea. So I just want you to kind of remember that, because there will be an example where we will have to consider what the denominator is, or any factors that we actually canceled. We didn't cancel any factors here, so we are all done.
right, our next example. What are the factors of x plus 2? They are not a and 2, right? a and 2 are not being multiplied, they're being added. So the only factor of a plus 2 that I know of is a plus 2 and 1. a minus 2, again, is itself a factor. So this has a factor of a plus 2, this has a factor of a minus 2. There's no commonality between those factors. So we're going to have to multiply this a plus 2 by an a minus 2, and this a minus 2 by an a plus 2, in order to create the lowest common denominator. Obviously, I'm going to do the same thing to the numerators. And notice, if you didn't add those parentheses, you wouldn't be multiplying correctly. So now let's do that multiplication. So on our first fraction here, I'm going to distribute my 5. So I have 5a minus 10 over a minus 2 times a plus 2. You might be wondering, why didn't I multiply the factors in the denominator? Well, since I already have it factored, I'm going to leave it factored because in the end of the addition problem, I'm going to see if I can actually factor the numerator and cancel any of them. So I'm going to leave the bottom factored. The top is not going to be in factored form once I finish this step. So I'm going to continue. So on this one, I'd get 3a plus 6 over a minus 2 times a plus 2. Because right, now I'm going to add these, and I get 8a minus 4 over a minus 2, a plus 2. And I'm going to factor that numerator to see if I actually have any commonalities in factors. So let's factor out a 4. So I'd get 2a minus 1 on the numerator over a minus 2a plus 2. All right. When we say add, obviously we want you to combine the fractions, but we also want you to simplify. So really in this, it's, it's two parts to this direction. So it's also simplify. So now look at this answer and see if you have any factors in common in the numerator and denominator. So we have this factor and this factor, this factor and this factor, and they are not in common. So we are done. This is as simplified as it's going to get. I'm going to make a little note of that right now. Simplify means there are no common factors remaining in the numerator and denominator. Okay, let's do one more example. So for our last example, Notice our denominators have not been factored yet, so I can't tell what the common denominator is if I don't know what the common factors are. So I'm going to do that first. Let's factor this. Uh, this would be x times x to get us the x squared, and uh, what, 6 times 2 gets us 12, but we want them to also get negative 8, so negative 6 and negative 2. So there's our new denominator. And over here, I'm going to factor out, let's see, they have a GCF of 4, so x minus 2 is remaining once I factor out that 4. So that's really what I should be comparing. Notice they have a common factor already of x minus 2. So that part is already taken care of. Now we have to make sure that they both have a factor of x minus 6. Ah, this one does and this one doesn't. So let's make sure that this one gets that. So I multiplied both the numerator and denominator by x minus 6. This one has a factor of 4. This one does not. So let's multiply this by 4 over 4. Now let's just make sure they have the same common factors. 4, x minus 6, and x minus 2. Perfect. Let's simplify that numerator to be 24. Uh, that's 4 times x minus 6 times x minus 2. This numerator is going to become 3x squared, once I distribute the 3x, minus 18x over that same denominator from before. Great. 
All right, now that we have a common denominator, we're going to add our numerators. And I'm going to add it um, so that it, it appears in standard form. So we really get 3x minus 18x plus 24 over 4 times x minus 6 times x minus 2. Okay, again, part of the problem is to add these fractions and also to simplify. And I need to actually factor my numerator to see if it has any common factors with my denominator. So notice, you might, you know, you get that feeling, oh my god, it's a 3x squared. I'm not that worried because 3, negative 18, and 24 all have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to start by factoring out a 3 from that quadratic. And now notice, I don't have to worry about factoring a quadratic with an a value, not 1. That makes me happy. Now I just have to worry about factoring x squared minus 6x plus 8. I can do that. So that becomes, let me write up here, 3 times, let's see, we're going to get our x's in front for our binomials to get the x squared. 8 is really 4 times 2, but they need to add up to negative 6, so I'll make them negative. They still multiply to positive 8, perfect, over 4 times x minus 6 times x minus 2. Excellent. Now that the numerator and denominator are factored, notice Ooh, we have a common factor in both of them, which obviously we're going to cancel since multiplying by x minus 2 is canceled by the dividing by x minus 2. So our simplified answer is 3 times x minus 4 over 4 times x minus 6. But remember from our graphing video that this x minus 2 being canceled actually indicates a discontinuity. To be more specific, it indicates a hole in this function's graph, if it was a function to be graphed. So I'm going to make a little note here that even though this has been simplified, x is not allowed to be 2. And the reason that I have to write that down is that if I looked at the simplified answer here, there's no indication of that. I had to go through the process in order to see that x can't be 2. If I had looked at the original problem, oh, look back here, obviously x can't be 6 and x can't be 2. I can st I'm still aware that x can't be 6. So think of it as like you were working on something and then you handed it to your friend. They would know x is not allowed to be 6, but they wouldn't know this unless they had seen all this work. So we always want to think of the simplified answer as being representative of all of the work. So we're going to include that. So I've included another problem for you to try on your own. So good luck on that, and remember to check your answer.